So welcome to the Dr. Gundry podcast. Uh, over 20 years ago, scientists began experimenting with this technique to see if they could actually grow plants in outer space, and it worked. Which got scientists thinking, maybe, just maybe, the same method could increase energy inside our cells. It's called red light therapy, and it's currently being used by thousands of elite athletes and other high performers to improve their energy and recovery. And there's emerging evidence that it could actually help you improve the complexion of your skin, diminish wrinkles, reduce morning stiffness and soreness, improve joint health, and even regrow hair. Whoa. So my guest today is Scott Nelson, the co-founder of Juve, a company at the forefront of red light therapy. We're gonna talk about the science behind red light therapy, how it works, and how you can use red light therapy to improve your energy. Scott, so glad to have you on the Dr. Gendry podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. This is great. So let's start with red light therapy. What the heck is it uh, so our listeners at home can understand it? And I know you brought a, a little baby red light therapy with you, and you're going to have to describe <laughs> all about this for the people who are listening rather than viewing. How sure. does it work? So we'll, we'll start hard, uh, high level and, okay. then, and then maybe uh, have the opportunity to go a little bit deeper into the science, as I'm, I'm sure you'll want to. But uh, the best analogy that I can use for uh, red light therapy, or in the world of academia, it's referred to as photobiomodulation, is to use food as a, as a parallel. Most people that are, are watching or listening to, uh, to the show are familiar with how our bodies metabolize or respond physiologically uh, to different macronutrients, right? Proteins, carbs, fats. Well, the same sort of concept holds true when it comes to different wavelengths of light. So UV light versus bright white light versus these types of wavelengths of light, red and near infrared light. And so those specific wavelengths of light actually help stimulate the mitochondria in our cells to produce more energy. And because of that core mechanism of action, you get a wide range of clinically proven uh, benefits that come with this type of uh, treatment. So, Help me out here. So most of my listeners know about mitochondria, but are you trying to tell me that the mitochondria eat this light and <laughs> produce energy? Or get, come on, help me out. Yeah. So it, not not necessarily per se. Um, it's it's more it's definitely more of a stimulation. So this is a relatively new field, photobiomodulation or light therapy. So researchers as well as us on the industry side are still continuing to to learn more about the the mechanisms of of action that are at play, and and, and they seem to be wide ranging. But at the core is um, during the cellular respiration process, which is the process that our cells go through to produce this energy, um, there's certain enzymes that are activated or stimulated by these wavelengths of light in a very healthy way. And because of that, our cells actually begin to work more efficiently to produce more energy. Um, so that's, that's going a little bit, a little bit uh, deeper you know, at, at a cellular level. Okay. So, you know, this is a new field, pretty new. So what are the benefits of red light therapy mm -hmm. that, are, that are proven? Mm -hmm. Let's start with that, and then maybe you can fantasize about things that aren't perfectly proven yet. Sure, sure. Um, so again, this is a relatively you know, new, new field. Um, you, you started the, the show off with a, kind of hinting at NASA's early involvement, which helped actually uh, sp spur on a lot, of, uh, a lot of additional clinical research uh, in, this, uh, in this field. But I, I would say um, there's probably some core benefit areas that are, that are very well proven. Um, some of those would include skin health. Uh, very, very clear that these wavelengths of light, primarily red light because, uh, because it, it's absorbed in the superficial layers of your, your, your skin, your dermis and epidermis, very clear that, that these wavelengths of light help stimulate you know, uh, healthy skin or help produce uh, those types of results. Another big benefit area would be um, the reduction of, of pain and inflammation, primarily uh, participant groups that are suffering from arthritis, as an example. Very clear evidence uh, that's peer reviewed and published that, that showcases that near infrared light probably more specifically helps reduce uh, inflammation. Another big benefit category that's, that's really well documented would be kind of uh, athletic performance and muscle recovery. And you mentioned that you know, it's one of the reasons that a lot of, a lot of elite athletes and, and, and people, fitness enthusiasts, et cetera, are seeing really good results is because they can you know, get on the field that much quicker, whether it's recovering from an injury or just recovering from a workout faster. And so there's, those are probably three big benefit areas, but there's a, a lot of emerging research as well. 
So are you saying that this is going to be in a training room in, in the NFL or the NBA, um, just to use an example? No, that's, that's happening right now um, with, with uh, our systems as well as others. But, um, you know, teams like the San Francisco 49ers, as an example, are using our, our, our big full body systems uh, as part of their, their recovery regimen. Um, there's several, there's several other, other teams, some I can say, some I, some, <laughs> some, some I can't. Some can. um, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a therapy that, that's, picking, that's picking up steam. And I, I'd say it's, 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 it's for two primary reasons. One is because the, the science is there, right? If someone just does a little bit of, of diligence and looks into it, just do simple searches on PubMed as an example. It's pretty overwhelming um, that this, there's, there's, there's proof to this, there's proof to the pudding, so to speak. Um, and then the other, the other um, kind of probably core reason why it's beginning to really pick up steam kind of within those circles is it works, right? At, if, if you give this a shot and use it consistently, um, there's pretty there's pretty resounding benefits that most that most uh, you know athletes specifically will notice right away. Primarily because they're that they're that in tune with their bodies. They know a after a certain workout this is how they normally feel, but after the use of consistent full body light therapy, they're noticing you know uh, a, a difference with the with uh, with their responses. So that would be probably two major reasons why why we're seeing it, the demand really increase there. Interesting. Now I know Ben Greenfield, uh, mm -hmm. who many of my listeners know. Uh, is a big fan, mm -hmm. and um, he's he's certainly talked about it, mm -hmm. and I think he appears on on your website. He does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very good. So um, so help uh, help our listeners understand uh, if you're going to do, can you do a double blind study with this device mm -hmm. if you're shining? red light on somebody, wouldn't they know it? That's a great question. Um, and kind of going back to your point of Ben, I think he's, he's actually, he's been a, a great partner of ours, which we're very thankful of, but he's a great example. He's so in tune with how his body typically responds to different modalities, treatments, et cetera. And that's one of the things he noticed right away, you know, when first using uh, light therapy. So I think that's a great example that you brought up, but kind of going back to your questions, how do you effectively study something that delivers bright red light. I think using red light specifically would be very tough to accomplish that. Um, in fact, I think you probably have to get pretty, pretty creative. Um, very creative. But near infrared light, on the other hand, near infrared light is invisible to the naked eye. And so that's very easy to actually accomplish a, you know, a double blind um, type of study. In fact, we, we're actually enrolling participants right now in those types of studies where you're using a sham treatment that's technically on but the user, the, the, the participant doesn't notice because again, near infrared light is invisible. So um, very, pr fairly easy to, to kind of stu study that for sure. Okay, so I know your, your big boxes and mm -hmm. we're, we're actually, for those of you listening, uh, you brought in your little portable box, yeah. which uh, I actually have and I'll describe maybe later what I've used it for. Uh, you have a portable box that can be either a red light box but you also have a near infrared light box you got it correct yep but your big ones have both both the red light and the infrared is that correct that's correct that's correct Th this one is we call it the the juve go and it's our handheld kind of convenient portable option and it delivers either or right either red or near infrared light um but our larger systems are the the modular systems as we like to call them um that allow you to kind of build out this full body system. Yeah, those those give the 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 user the ability to switch between the wavelengths, red or near infrared, or deliver both at the same time. And I would I would say you know ninety five percent or more of our customers use both at the same time because there are benefits to using using both. Um, and really, the only difference between the two wavelengths is depth of penetration. Very similar mechanisms of action, but. And I mentioned, I mentioned this before with respect to skin health, red light is absorbed um, at, in the superficial layers of our tissue where near infrared, on the other hand, has the unique ability to penetrate a lot, a lot deeper into our bodies. In fact, it does penetrate through bone even. Um, a lot of the energy dissipates as it travels through bone, but um, it does have the unique ability to, uh, to penetrate um, uh, into deeper levels in our body, and it, which is why a lot of the times when we look at um, clinical studies that are involving you know, enhanced cognitive function or uh, reduce symptoms from people that have suffered from some type of brain or, or traumatic brain injury, typically near infrared light is used because it has the ability to, to penetrate deeper. Okay, so a lot of people are hearing, uh, hearing this and they're going, ooh, you know, wavelength and <laughs> deep penetration and I hear that we got to be really worried about 5G with all that sort of frequency. 
help me with this. How is this different than all those scary radio frequency things we're hearing? About? Yeah, it can be kind of abstract, and it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. We 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 uh, we're in the process of of doing a, a customer survey with our, our customer base, trying to learn a little bit more about like what. How did you first learn about light therapy? What did you think of it? And that, that's one of the things that, that has, has sort of popped up is like, when you first heard about this, what did you think? Like, was it abstract? Was it hard to understand? Were you all in, et cetera? And that, that's kind of the general consensus is like, I keep hearing people talk about it, but I, don't, I can't quite get my head around it. And it's, it's tough because it's like wavelengths of light. It's a lot of physics. And you know, I, I'm a biology guy myself, but physics is always kind of tough. You know, I think <laughs> not just me, but maybe for a lot of people. Um, but the, the, again, the, the, another, another, I used the kind of the food analogy before, but another good kind of analogy is that, you know, we're here in Southern California. You see a ton of houses with solar panels on the roof. In fact, it's hard not to find, uh, you, it's harder to find a house that doesn't have a solar panel. And we all kind of understand the concept that solar panels on houses are able to capture energy, right? Light energy from the sun and repurpose it elsewhere. Um, that, again, that same parallel, that same concept holds true within our bodies. We have chromophores throughout all of our bodies. In fact, nearly every cell in our body has some type of chromophore that responds to these wavelengths of light. And, and, and in essence, they're, they're, when I say responding, they're almost, they're, they're capturing it, right? And, our, and the, the mechanism, we can get deeper into the mechanism like we kind of chatted about previously, but they're capturing it and repurposing it elsewhere. Uh, so our bodies have more energy to heal, to recover, um, to, to kind of function the way, you know, uh, we're, we're, uh, are, we're, we're intended to function. Now, wait a minute, Scott. You say we have chromophores <laughs> in our body. Is that kind of like a chromosome? Uh, no. Not really. Not really. Yeah, chromo it's kind of a, 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 nerdy, nerdy type of <laughs> a nerdy type of description. But um, one of the mecha mechanisms um, that, that I, I, I sort of alluded to earlier is... Um, um, there, there's within the, the world of photobiomodulation, one of kind of the more well understood mechanisms, although it's, it's not entirely clear, but it's, it's fairly well, well understood or well appreciated, is that there's an enzyme during the cellular, re, uh, cellular respiration process called cytochrome C oxidase. And that's a chromophore that actually responds very favorably. It resonates with red and near infrared light. So that's an example of a chromo, uh, chromophore. And because we're stimulating cytochrome C oxidase, um, it allows more natural or more efficient cellular, uh, cellular respiration, as pr particularly during the fourth phase of cellular respiration. So, so yeah, so there's just different proton proteins and enzymes that respond differently to these wavelengths of light. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, um, our, the mitochondria in our cells are just functioning more efficiently. They're producing more energy um, uh, at, at, a, at a peak level. So are you saying at a basic level, we're basically a light-seeking and light-sensing organism? Yeah, I think I think that's a great example, and and you know most people understand that that our bodies respond to UVB wavelengths, right, from the sun, um, both good and bad. Excess UV uh, ray, uh, wavelengths of light can be harmful, right? Our skin responds and, and burns, and we get sort of an inflammatory response. But in turn, our bodies actually respond to UVB wavelengths and produce more vitamin D, right? So that's kind of a well understood concept. It's the same kind of thing that's going on with red and near infrared light. Our bodies are responding very favorably to these wavelengths of light, and then the the the, the positive ramifications are, are increased energy systemically throughout all of our bodies. Are we not getting enough anymore? It's a very good point, and I would say uh, affirmatively yes. Um, in fact, there's there's pretty well documented evidence that at least here in America, um, we spend over 93% of our lives indoors now um, under artificial light. Um, and I, before moving to uh, Southern California, we were from the Midwest, from Minneapolis um, specifically. And that stat may seem kind of alarming at first, you know, 93% of our lives indoors. But for me personally, that was true. In fact, it probably was worse um, in terms of like my exposure to natural light. And that's, that's so drastically different than how our grandparents, our great grandparents um, lived. And um, because of that difference, I think it I think it speaks to the fact that we are sort of light light deprived um, in a, in, a, in a way. And so so yes, to answer your question, I'd say we, we don't get enough of these healthy wavelengths of light. Hmm. Okay. So if this stuff is so great, a lot of the skeptical listeners are saying, Scott, okay, you know this is amazing stuff. If this is so great, why aren't people using this? <laughs> It's a great question. I've, I've thought a lot about that, and unfortunately, I don't. I probably don't have like a definitive answer as to why. Why now? Like, why is this now seemingly taking off? And I would say, 
it's not necessarily taking off, I would say, yet. I mean, I think we're still very, very early. Um, but j just like any sort of field of, of medicine, um, there's a significant uphill climb, right, to any sort of treatment. Um, I know you're a ca cardiac surgeon, you know, and you're, you're, that's, that's your warehouse. I actually came from the, the cardiovascular space on the, on, the, on the medical device side. To get to, to see a therapy or a new modality adopted, it's, we're talking years, you know, um, 10 years at a, at, at a minimum, at a, at a very minimum. Um, and so I think when it comes to light therapy, I think there's an interesting blend of um, it's still a very niche community in terms of on, on the practitioner side, the researcher and practitioner side. There's, it's a very small community. Um, it's not well understood nor covered or reimbursed by traditional payers or insurance companies, which makes a big difference there, too. Um, I, I would say there's not um, and I'll give us a, a, our company a plug here. There hasn't really been a, any, any sort of company to try to raise more awareness for like the, the science of light therapy and the, and the proven benefits of it uh, either. I think we're seeing more and more maybe companies kind of come to, come to the, the forefront, but we were one of the first companies to really bring a lot of you know, awareness and education around the benefits of light therapy to a wider audience. And so I think there's, there's probably a, a number of different ways to probably explain that, but that's, that's sort of my, uh, my mediocre answer to that question. <laughs> All right. Well, so another, a skeptic would say, well, so the sunlight obviously has red component and it has near infrared. So couldn't I just spend four hours outdoors every day and accomplish the same thing? It's a, it's a, that's a great, I, I would say you're exactly right, you know, Joe skeptic. <laughs> the, the, in, in fact, in, uh, with, with people that, um, that, that come to us, whether it's through you know, e you know, would-be customers that come to us through email or, or online chat or some sort of, whatever, regardless of the channel, that maybe don't want to go all in with a light therapy device, one of the first things we say is just try to get more natural sunlight on a daily basis, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes even. That's going to be a lot, you're going to be in a lot healthier um, environment doing that versus not doing that. So, I, I mean, that, that's, that's an easy, it's a free step, et cetera. But I think um, really the, the, the question is, do we have enough time? Do our modern lifestyles allow us to get outside on, on, on that sort of a consistent basis. And in some scenarios, you know, we don't really deal with this in Southern California per se, but there's a lot of areas throughout the world that just don't get a lot of natural sunlight either. Um, um, Minneapolis that I, I mentioned where we come from is a, is a great example of that. Not a, not, not a lot of not natural sunlight. And so I'd say to kind of answer that question and come full circle is that I could say the same thing about Whole Foods, right? Um, don't, you don't maybe necessarily need to buy a ton of supplements, just get it from Whole Foods, but some people just don't have the time. They have busy lifestyles, they have kids, they have you know, work commitments, et cetera. It's just hard to do. And so um, using a, a high quality light therapy device is an easy way to sort of supplement that into your lifestyle if you can't afford to get out uh, um, uh, and expose yourself to natural sunlight on a consistent basis. Got it. So now uh, my good friend, Joseph Mercola, um, we've had debates about vitamin D supplements and he said, well, you know, you can get all the vitamin D you want by spending two hours every day uh, <laughs> out in natural sunlight. And I said, not too many people, I know him, spend two hours in a Speedo walking the beaches <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale every day of your life. So that's an impractical recommendation and I mm -hmm. think you're saying the same same thing. You're exactly right, yeah. Speaking of Joseph Mercola, he would say, just go to your hardware store and buy an infrared light and just don't burn yourself with it. Is there a difference between buying a heat lamp at a, at a hardware store? Yeah, you're, you're hitting on some great questions, Dr. Gundry, I can tell Sorry. you. No, you've, <laughs> you, you've done your research. No, it, it's another one that, that really comes up quite, quite a bit. What's the difference between something like this and an infrared you know, heat lamp that you can pick up at a Lowe's or a Home Depot? Great question. And um, there, there, is, there is quite a bit of difference in short, um, but to get a little bit more granular, our, our, when I, I've referenced these red and near infrared light, wavelengths of light um, um, throughout our conversation so far. And clinical research has shown that it's actually very specific wavelengths of light that actually um, help us the most, or help us to the greatest degree. Uh, namely, red light, visible red light, in kind of the low to mid 600 nanometer range, um, as well as the uh, uh, wavelengths of near infrared light in the low to 800 nanometer range. And so when you look at that sort of that, that window, um, there's also clinical studies that showcase that wavelengths of light in the 700 nanometer range really don't have any sort of biological impact on our bodies at all. And it kind of all goes back to how do, 
how do our cells respond to different wavelengths of light? And so our cells, it's very, very clear based on thousands, literally thousands of published peer reviewed evidence that our you, you need very specific wavelengths of light. And if you, use, if you take a, a heat lamp example, um, most of the wavelengths from a heat lamp are actually not near infrared light, but actually mid and far infrared light. That's why they produce more heat. And so in essence, if by using infrared heat lamp, you're not really getting those, those clinically proven wavelengths of light. Um, and most of that energy is dissipated as heat because it's mid and far infrared. So it's just a different biological response and really quite not, you know, very different than you know, a light therapy or photobiomodulation device. So how did you actually, let's talk about Juve and how mm -hmm. that came about. How did you actually, first of all, why'd you, why'd you form the company? <laughs> and how did you figure out the, how to make these wavelengths of light? Yeah, so um, I've spent, I mentioned this before, I spent most of my professional career in the traditional medical device space. And in fact, that's why we were based in, in Minneapolis. Uh, I was with Medtronic at the time, um, primarily, the, primarily the peripheral vascular space. So probably interacted with, you know, some they of They make all of my catheters. <laughs> yeah, so some, of your, some of your peers. God bless them. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I, I, I think, it's, I think it's, it's a nice transition kind of going from this idea of like a skeptic to kind of our, our story because I was that skeptic. I, I was in what I thought was, you know, real, real, real medicine. science. Yeah, yeah, real stuff. Um, helping, you know, doing real things. And, and so when, uh, when my wife and her sister, Melissa, bought or purchased a you know a quote unquote red light therapy package at a local spa in minneapolis i was you know they're 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 into they're more um accepting of newer things than i am and so i was completely skeptical i thought red light therapy that's kind of you know everyone does the natural chuck of like that can't be you know that can't be real totally woo woo i had the same type of response um, but they had really good results they went consistently uh for about eight to ten weeks to the spa four to five times a week and saw really good benefits primarily related to their skin health you know reduction of eczema uh, age spots, um, uh, stretch marks from pregnancies, et cetera. And so I thought they were really into it. And I thought, okay, well may maybe there is something to this. And so I went right to PubMed. I did the same thing that Joe Skeptic is gonna do. Go to PubMed, search for red light therapy or photobiomodulation and another popular acronym, acronym is LLLT or low level light therapy or low level laser therapy. And you will find endless numbers of studies. Um, in fact, there's, um, there's over 3000 published manuscripts on light therapy. So I was quickly blown away by that, by the sheer amount of, of, of data. And, um, you know, so the next step for me was like, who, what, who's, who makes these devices? Where can you get them, et cetera? And what we found is that um, at the time, this was back in 2015, at the time there was very small underpowered devices available on the market or super expensive, expensive laser-based devices. And there was this kind of gap in the middle of like, you know, why isn't anyone producing kind of a, a device that you can use at home? Because that's really ideally where most of us should be using the therapy at home that delivers clinical grade power and ideally over a broader surface area. You know, because our, our kind of core thesis as a company is that full body light therapy would be ideal. If it works for small areas, it's got to work for your for, for your entire body too. And so we didn't intend to start a company. We just thought, huh, there's no one really talking about it. There's not really, there seems to be a kind of a product gap here. And so we started doing some early prototyping. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, is an engineer. So he started kind of messing around with some prototypes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and kind of, we were off to the, off to the races um, in, in early 2016. So it's really kind of a combination of kind of quote unquote stumbling into sort of a therapy that was based on a lot of science, but yet no one was really talking about and the fact that there wasn't really uh, devices that you could use at, at home that treated large areas of your body. So I hope you didn't quit your day job. <laughs> I had a pretty good job, so it took me a while. It took me probably a lot longer uh, to, to quit. But, um, you know, we, we um, just like most startups, we, we launched our product, tried to really identify, you know, whether, whether there was product market fit. Um, and we were fortunately um, did that, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. Um, and so we, 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 we saw some, some early traction, you know, in the, in, in the marketplace, particularly in the kind of the natural health kind of longevity communities, uh, people that listen to this type of show, um, and are interested in, you know, in optimizing their health in the most natural way possible. And, uh, and yeah, we, we saw, saw pretty strong early traction and it's been kind of a, uh, uh, a nice, nice ride ever since. How did you break into athletics? I mean, trying to convince, you know, uh, 300 pound lineman to sit in a box of red lights and uh, was that an easy sell? Uh, no, I, I, I definitely wouldn't say it's, it's an easy sell. That's definitely a, a harder, a hard, a much different, much more difficult community to, uh, to convince. But, um, there's a guy on our team who's here in the audience, actually Wes, who's been pretty, 
pretty interested in, in, um, in kind of trying to cross the chasm from a therapy that's supported by science um, and, and very quickly uh, being adopted in kind of the natural health community to, to, this, to this, you know, to elite athletes, you know, and, um, and, there's, and it's interesting, a lot of those elite athletes, um, whether they're with the San Francisco 49ers or the Chicago Blackhawks, are actually listening to a lot of shows like yours. They're listening to your show. They're listening to Ben, ben Greenfield's podcast, Dave Asprey's podcast, who I know you've had on recently. Um, so there, there's an interesting kind of overlap between these two communities. And so um, we started to see some, some interest um, from, from those types of people in the, in the professional sports world that would listen to these, you know, your, your, type, of, your type of show. And we've seen kind of a, a, a slower kind of uh, um, traction that's really begun to build over the past probably six to nine months um, with, uh, within those, those, those types of circles. Okay, so you've got a box that everybody needs. Uh, so what are the challenges of convincing everybody that they need this? Yeah, so <laughs> we talked a little bit about this. It seems like red light, you know, there's a lot of people thinking about or talking about red light therapy as of late, but I think we're still very early, right? And so this, this challenge of like convincing a much broader audience that light is actually a healthy thing, that they should consider light maybe equally as important as food, um, in their in kind of their daily routines that's that's not an easy conversation um, especially when we're trying to do that sort of in a virtual kind of digital environment um, so it's it's definitely a, definitely a challenge and i think just the one of the core reasons is because light is sort of like we talked about earlier it's kind of abstract you know most people just naturally think of it as i turn on the light to illuminate a room and have no idea that could actually be you know pretty beneficial for our overall health I think we're making progress, you know, and as a company, we, uh, we allocate a lot of our, our, a lot of resources towards education. So I think we're making some progress, but we just gotta, we've gotta, we've gotta stay after it. And if you're still kind of skeptical, you know, after listening to this, you know, this, this, this conversation, I would say, don't listen to us. Don't listen to me. Go right to PubMed. You know, there's a lot of, lot of, 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 of science that supports this type of therapy. And if you, if you go into it with a, even, even a little bit of an open mind, I think you'll be pretty, pretty impressed. Um, just like I was. The athletes are using it, and the super performers are using it, and Ben Greenfield is, you know, kicking ass and taking <laughs> names. So what, how do you get Joe Blow, everyday consumer, to say, I'm not going to run a marathon, I'm not going to kick ass, why should I use this? Yeah, so I think, I think there's, there's more and more awareness, you know, thanks to, you know, people like yourself, people like Ben and Dave Asprey and other, other um you know, I'm going to use air quotes here, influencers, health influencers um, from a wide variety of sort of arenas that are beginning to help us raise more awareness about light in general. You know, we, we started to see some early signs, and I think it's, you know, semi well understood that excess blue light at night, as an example, can, can impact our circadian rhythm uh, because uh, it tells our bodies that we should be wide awake when in reality we should be beginning to, to rest for sleep. And in fact, you've seen you know, even, even big brands like Apple begin to implement some certain things with even iPhones around uh, you know, screen time um, and adjust, allowing you to easily adjust like the brightness of the screen at night, etc. So I think there is this kind of burgeoning sort of interest in, in light. Um, but that blue light is very different than healthy wavelengths of light. And so what we're trying to do is help people understand um, that similar to food, right? Similar to how they think about whole foods and macronutrients and how to maybe reduce, you know, lectins in their diet, as an example. Um, they, they need to be thinking about light as well. That should, be, that should be part of that equation. Sleep, fitness and training, food, and light. You know, they should, light should be in, in, in that equation. And so how we're doing that, um, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, we're out, we allocate a lot, a lot of our, a lot of resource towards, towards, towards education. You know, and at the end of the day, um, whether someone purchases a, a, a device from us, hopefully they will, or someone else, um, there, there's that, that's one more person that understands the importance of light. And so I think we're, we're demonstrating it there. And as, as well as just kind of at a grassroots level, we have a lot of people that purchase even our small device like this and want, want to go, go bigger. In fact, I mentioned some survey uh, data recently. There's, there's pretty strong evidence that they're not only telling their their friends and family about you know the impact that lights had on their health, but also they want to go bigger. They want to go with a, a larger device. So I think the combination of, of those two things is, is allowing us to kind of slowly push this push the boulder up the hill when it comes to you know raising more awareness about the benefits of, of red and, and near infrared light. So are you saying go big or go home? Or? <laughs> so what we're talking about this this box? Uh, what's the dimensions of this box? About 
Yeah, it's, it's a little bit bigger than, than an iPhone, you know, um, sli slightly bigger than that, maybe a little bit thicker, obviously. Um, but that, the, the Juve Go is a really nice option. Delivers either red or, or near infrared light, um, completely wireless and rechargeable, and in fact, delivers the same type of power as our larger systems. So this little guy will do both, um, r red or near infrared? Not at the same time. Uh, you, have to, you, have to, you have to purchase one or the other. Um, in the future, I think we'll probably allow for that type of functionality, but for now, it's, it's either red or near infrared. But with our larger systems, um, the, the modular systems, those do allow you to uh, use either red or near infrared or both at the same time. And right. really the cool thing about that, that modular system is that um, I mentioned earlier our, our core thesis as a company is that full body light, light therapy is, is ideal. And what, what, what's interesting about those modular systems is you can buy a smaller device, um, something like the Juve Mini that we call that's probably about, I don't know, four times the size of that. And you can, you can start with that one and then add to it over time. And the devices connect together both physically and electronically. And so one device controls the whole system. So it's kind of like Lego blocks. So you can start small, try it out. If you don't, if you don't like it, you can return it through our, our, our free return uh, uh, trial period. Uh, but if you do, you can add other devices onto it and build out this full body system over time, which is kind of a, a really cool feature. Cool. Well, the reason I wanted to have you on is, it, it, I don't know, it's probably a year ago, you you guys said, hey, you know, why don't you try out our device? And, and, and I've actually had done a lot of research on red light therapy and near infrared light therapy with, with a company that I was advising, and mm -hmm. I won't mention their name. Uh, it's not a competitor of yours, <laughs> so that's okay. And uh, I set it up, my wife really kind of poo pooed, and she said, what, what is this going to do? And I said, well, you know, there's actually huge amounts of benefits of this. And about the same time, it was actually this time last fall, I was participating in a exercise of resistance stretching. And I had an old knee injury. I had a meniscus tear oh, 20 years ago that had healed without surgery. I actually couldn't even walk uh, mm. because of my left knee. And I actually had to walk to another appointment. And by the end, my, my leg was pretty much stiff. And it remained that way. Now, no matter what I did, stretching, heat, you name it, um, didn't try NSAIDs, but took all sorts of other uh, attempts. And it wasn't getting any better. And I'm going, this, I, my dogs hated it because I couldn't run with them. And this thing arrived almost simultaneously hmm. with it. And I said, you know, uh, what the heck? And so I started focusing, uh, actually, on my left leg and knee. And within about oh, a week or two weeks, I've forgotten, this thing started getting better. And it completely resolved. And the only thing I changed was, you know, your stupid box. <laughs> and I'm going, wow, this is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And so I, I became a fan just because of that. And then a few weeks ago, we were hiking in Deer Valley, uh, Park City, Utah at about 10,000 feet. We do a lot of hiking, but not consistently at high elevation. And we would hike for about four hours. And usually after that sort of workout, um, my, my wife's pretty aggressive on these hills, uh, my quads would be achy the next mm -hmm. day. So the first night out, knowing that my quads were gonna be achy, I had actually taken your little Juve Mini and I just sat around uh, afterwards, and I, I just spent 10 minutes on each thigh, literally just sitting there. My wife said, what are you doing? And I said, you know, I'm just going to do a little experiment here. And leave me alone. <laughs> and, she, and so the next day, and I would have sore quads, I can guarantee you, my quads weren't sore. Hmm. And again, is it a placebo effect? Well, I should have done one and not the other, but, you know, to be a true scientist. Yeah. But I was actually impressed. Hmm. That, and so I did it, uh, we did four days of hiking, and about four hours every day, and I did it every night. So I'm with the, the athletes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a super marathoner, <laughs> thank you very much. My, my wife will routinely hold our near infrared go at, at night on her forehead. The same thing that Dr. Hamlin, who's a, um, uh, on our scientific advisory board, is a pretty well-known photo, photo medicine researcher. He, he does the same thing. If he ever struggles at night, he holds a near, uh, the, the near-infrared device right on his forehead. So my wife is doing the same thing. And I, you'd think I wouldn't be skeptical at this point, right? But I'm like, 
really? Is that really doing it? Doing anything, you know? And uh, and sure enough, like I've started to do it now, and my sleep scores are are better at night, you know. So it's kind of one of those things where um, it can seem so hard to kind of grasp, you know. Are and, you and... saying that I can increase <laughs> my heart rate variability by holding your near infrared device near my forehead? I think there's pretty strong evidence that maybe su su suggests that. And so I think I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is that. If, if you could be skeptical for a wide variety of reasons, right? But look at the science and then give, give it a shot. And I, I, I think, you know, you'd be hard pressed not to find some, some benefits, whether it's something related to like recovery or even, you know, like, like sleep as an example, which is another, another very common um, kind of result that we hear back from customers is improved sleep All right, as well. so I've got my Aura ring. There you go. And I've got my Whoop band. Uh, right. We're testing them out. So that, you're not double fisting it per se, double, I am, I, double handing I it? Double handing it, so. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna. I'll check that out. Yeah. Now, tell me about this crazy idea that guys are increasing their testosterone <laughs> by shining light on certain areas of their body. So, <laughs> that's true. Certain areas, indeed. And I Come think, on. I, think uh, I think Ben Greenfield sort of popularized that that treatment. That's still still very popular uh, today. In fact, we see some pretty interesting images on social media, as you can as you can probably imagine. But uh, when you look at the, that's one of those emerging categories that I mentioned earlier, where there's not maybe as robust science to support it now, um, but there is some. There is some that's pretty promising, and, and what it what it tends to showcase is that red light um, and near infrared light can be both beneficial for testosterone increases as well as sperm mobility for for those that maybe struggle with infertility too. Um, so it's it's interesting in evidence, but anecdotally, um, what I think is probably even more compelling is that. We have a lot of, um, we work with a lot of, you know, health, uh, you know, influencer partners, whether it's someone like Ben Greenfield, yourself, Mike Munsell, or Luke Story, people that are all already pretty healthy. I mean, they're doing all the right things. And some of them have gotten their, their blood work done, or at least quite a few of them have gotten their blood work done before introducing, you know, full body uh, light therapy, and then after, after anywhere from, from uh, 60 to 90 days. And the results are pretty dramatic. And they're showing increases in not only free test in, in both categories of testosterone. Free. So, yeah. yeah, so free in total. And so it, it's, it's, it's pretty compelling that this, that there's, there's some, there, this, it, it does work. It does work for the, for those areas. And we're, this is a, that's a category that we're beginning to uh, study more and more in, in clinical studies. In fact, we've got some, uh, um, we're enrolling participants right now with a group in Minneapolis studying both hormonal benefit or hormonal results or hormonal markers in women and men. And the results are, are pretty staggering. Um, we'll hope to hope to release release those in the in the near future. But it's it's pretty overwhelming that light therapy as a as it has a pretty interesting uh, positive impact on hormonal health. Now, what about mood? Mm -hmm. Can this stuff help mood? Coming from Minneapolis, where you yeah. know, everybody's ready to kill themselves in the winter. Yeah, and I think probably a, a good portion of your audience is probably familiar with the the happy lamps, right? right. The, the right. sad exactly. lamps, the seasonal affective disorder yeah. lamps. Um, I think there's some pretty there's some decent evidence that suggests those those do work for for you know types of depressive disorders. But I think what's even more interesting is that um, near red and near infrared light is beginning. It, we're beginning to, to learn more about its its benefits for for those areas as well. Whether it's you know just kind of mood in general, or if it's a more like more symptomatic depressive disorder. In fact, there's some really interesting evidence um, over the past two or three years that's been published that really does showcase the use of near infrared light significantly helping, you know, um, um, people with symptomatic, you know, depressive disorders. And um, I like Dr. Hamlin's quote who I referenced earlier. He said he, he thinks you get a little bit more bang for your buck with a red or near infrared light device versus something like a happy lamp because you get a lot more wide ranging benefits with a, with a device like that. Mood being one of those, but also, you know, muscle recovery, uh, reduction of inflammation, sleep benefits, et cetera. Well, Scott, thanks so much for coming on the program. Where can people find out about Juve? So I, I, I probably, the best place is probably our website, juve.com. So J2O's to these, juve.com. If you want to check out reviews, we publish all of them, even the, even the negative ones. Um, check out our reviews. That's actually really, really interesting to see. There's, over, there's thousands of them now that, that really tell a, a pretty interesting story about the wide ranging kind of benefits that people get from, from this type of therapy. But if you're more into the science, you know, and kind of want to nerd out on that, we do, uh, we do have a lot of, of educational articles on, on the Learn uh, sort of library on our, on our website as well. So, so check that out. So those would probably be the, the two main areas. And then we're at Juve Social on, on social media. So in, Instagram, uh, we're pretty active there. So at Juve Social.
because I'm sure you're misspelled all the time. Why two O's <laughs> and two V's? <laughs> two O's, two V's. So this was back in 2015, uh, kind of an interesting in interesting story. We were looking for a short.com. We wanted a .com and we wanted it to be kind of short and catchy. And so we were trying to juve is a, is a play on rejuvenate because um, that's what really what these wavelengths of light are doing. So it uh, gets misspelled sometimes, but I think uh, there's a lot of people that kind of like to juve now, or they they're, they find themselves juving on a on a on a daily basis. So it's kind of it's kind of cut on. Very good. Uh -huh. Thanks again for being with us. And now it's time for audience question. Jonas Tack on YouTube asks, "Wouldn't you have to drink a lot of wine to get any of the polyphenol benefits?" That's a great question, Jonas. It turns out that. If you wanted to get about 100 milligrams of resveratrol, which is one of the polyphenols in red wine, you would probably have to drink 150 bottles of red wine to get that much resveratrol. But there are also lots of other polyphenols in red wine besides resveratrol, and one of them is another small molecule called quercetin or quercetin, depending on how you like to do it. So it's the combination of all these ingredients. Now, no one would suggest that you should be drinking 150 bottles of red wine to get the health benefits of resveratrol, and that's why there are some pretty doggone good resveratrol combinations out there. But just because you're not going to get 100 milligrams of resveratrol every day from your red wine doesn't mean that if you do drink, red wine is probably the best source of polyphenols in alcohol. And like I always say, if you don't drink, don't start. And thanks again for joining us on the Dr. Gundry podcast. We'll see you next week.